Welcome back to learnpiezo.org and today we're going to have a, a demonstration on how to find the resonance and anti-resonance frequencies and also determine the resonance and anti-resonance um, and, uh, impedance values as well. So the resonance and anti-resonance frequencies are really they're used for a lot of different piezoelectric calculations. From the resonance frequency you can calculate the compliance uh, the uh, the uh, short circuit compliance, which is also um, known as the you can call it stiffness, the inverse of stiffness, which we're typically used to using in engineering. Uh, and we can from the anti-resonance frequency and the resonance frequency locations, we can calculate the coupling factor, which, as we remember, the the coupling factor squared is equal to the d constant squared divided by um, the elastic compliance and the permittivity. Uh, then measuring the permittivity of the material in an off-resonance case, such as 1 kilohertz, we can calculate um, all of these all these parameters. And we can completely characterize a piezoelectric material uh, for those parameters which are most useful for uh, practical applications. So about the frequency response of piezoelectric materials. If we vary the frequency and apply, let's say, 1 volt RMS or over a piezoelectric material, and we'll just draw this diagram like this, and we'll connect it to some, uh, you know, uh, voltage source sinusoidal, and we vary that frequency uh, from below. This, this is this is DC. Uh, let's say this is one kilohertz, uh, and then we will. The trend will look like this. Now, obviously, this is not zero here. Um, this is a log scale. So basically, we have. So this is not zero again. Uh, basically, we have two things happening here, or perhaps three things. We have the off resonance case, where the piezoelectric material is acting like a capacitor, uh, very clearly. And we have the resonance case, which is, uh, which is, which results in a minimum impedance, uh, and that is the mechanical resonance of the system. And here we have the anti-resonance of the system, which is a sort of coupling between the mm, the resonance, the mechanical resonance, and the electrical clamped response of the material. So similarly, or also if we plot the log, so this was the log impedance, absolute impedance, and absolute impedance is simply the voltage divided by the current, but we're going to do the RMS, or you can do an amplitude, so it doesn't have any phase, it's just an absolute value, and thus we get an absolute impedance, you can also have imaginary values for the impedance and real values, and from that you take the amplitude, and therefore you get the absolute impedance, so that's what we're plotting here. We, we can also plot the phase data, and what the phase data typically looks like is before um, we hit the resonance point, uh, we have a negative 90 degree phase approximately, just like a capacitor would. And then as we increase our frequency, for many materials at resonance you have a zero degrees phase of, cur uh, of voltage and current. This is the phase between voltage and current, so uh, voltage is lagging or current is lacking behind voltage for the capacitor, this is negative 90. And then we reach approximately 90 degrees in between resonance and anti-resonance and we go back down through 0 degrees at the reson ant resonance point. So this point right here, this is the resonance, not exactly drawn to scale but you have the idea where the 0 degrees points uh, correspond to the resonance and anti-resonance respectively. Um, that's, we call that FR and we'll call that FA for the anti-resonance. Some materials won't exhibit this perfect behavior uh, due to large internal losses. So what you'll find is that it just goes up and it may not even pass zero degrees. Uh, but you will s most likely find some type of, you know, in the impedance spectrum, you, for that weird material, not weird, it's just highly lossy, uh, you'll find so somewhat like a, not a, somewhat like something like that. And that these kind of materials have their own problems. This is the resonance, this is the anti-resonance, this is the off-resonance case uh, where the material is acting like a capacitor. So essentially you have this response. And the reason why we have 
where we're having these responses, well, let's draw that. Let's draw it out. Uh, this is the equivalent circuit of a piezoelectric material, a simplified one. And we'll notice two things. We have two branches, uh, and this is let's say we're applying the load over here. We have two branches here. Uh, one branch is called the damped current branch or it's called the capacitive current. I'll call it capacitive because it's easier to remember. And the other one is motional. And obviously this uh, one, as maybe I've explained earlier, this capacitor is representative of the clamped capacitance. That is, if you are clamping a piezoelectric material, it cannot store elastic energy by expanding. and It cannot undergo strain. And therefore, the permittivity or we could say the energy stored when applying an electric field over this material is less and thus it's only going to be this so this material property is related to the permittivity under constant strain and strain is denoted as little x and here in the bottom branch we have a LCR resonance circuit this uh, capacitor here is representative of that energy which is introduced to the material when you apply an electric field at off resonance k, so it has to do with the piezoelectric d constant and the s coefficient. So when you apply an electric field at approximately DC conditions, one kilohertz is also approximately DC. You get these two capacitors only adding up together because they're in series. Because this resonance circuit is not active, it's not really active and participating unless you're at the resonance frequency or, or around that region. So this, so at resonance, what, what's happening? At the resonance point, it's the resonance of this branch. Therefore, the impedance becomes minimum. All the current goes through this part, and, no, and little or no current goes through that part, the top branch. But at the anti-resonance, what happens? Well, there's a, two explanations I'm going to give you. The first explanation is that this sort of forms a resonance circuit here an anti-resonance circuit where the current is being exchanged between this capacitor and this LCR circuit. The current is being exchanged and it's not being uh, leaked outward. So the current is not flowing out of the system, it's just flowing sort of in a loop. The other way we can look at it, and remember these terms IC and IM, that's the top branch and the bottom branch. IC, IM, IC, IM, IC, IM. What's happening at the resonance uh, frequency or the anti-resonance frequency is that the capacitive branch all, all the time a capacitor has the same phase approximately so we're going to draw this as a standard reference value um, and the voltage applied for a capacitor so this is the re this is related to the IC um, that is always constant but the phase of the mechanical side is different uh, generally the, the phase is changing for a mechanical vibrator as you pass through the resonance frequency um, the, the phase goes from in phase, 0 degrees, to 90 degrees phase when you are approaching the resonance, resonance frequency and it goes past 90 and there's some details about plus, you know, plus minus 90 depending on the uh, mode and a little bit. But just know that the, 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 the phase changes a lot at the resonance point for a uh, mechanical resonance system. So therefore, at that anti-resonance, what's actually happening is, is that the phase for the, for the motional branch is becoming opposite to the, uh, uh, to the uh, capacitive branch. It's not, only becoming, it's not only opposite, but it also becomes of a larger magnitude, of, of the similar magnitude. As we can understand, the current in the capacitor, the current in the motional branch is getting less and less as we're getting farther from this resonant point. And as it gets farther from the resonance points, and is approximately equal to the, or close as close as it's going to get to being equal to the capacitive branch, that causes this cancellation of current. So then we get only a small current, really small current, because these, these currents are, are canceling between the first branch and the second branch. One branch is giving a negative side, one branch is giving a positive side, and we know from Kirchhoff's law that these will cancel. Therefore, uh, we get a smaller resulting current, a smaller resulting current for the same voltage is a high impedance. And that's that for this first part of the video.